Hello, welcome to my video. Now some of you might have already noticed that this is clearly a Windows desktop. Right clicking clearly indicates that this is Windows 11. And I don't necessarily find that I, there's anything wrong with my Windows right now. I mean, <laughs> I use this computer to do work and stuff and everything pretty much works perfectly. And on top of all that, I even got a Windows Vista style start menu. So I truly don't really have anything to complain about. Everything works. Okay, well, this is definitely a bug. Yep, okay, never mind. You, you know what, actually disregard what I said. I think I actually need to install a new operating system. Okay, so this time I want to install Fedora 42, which was just released. And what makes it interesting for me is that there is something brand new here, aka they now have an official cosmic desktop spin. And I already used it a little bit in my last video, but back then it was so buggy that it was essentially unusable. But I'm hoping that this time it might be a little bit better, even though <laughs> it is still in alpha. So it's literally not even in beta yet, meaning that it most likely is not ready for daily driving. But this time, instead of forcing myself to switch over to Linux completely, I just want to install Linux and play around with it and just have fun and enjoy it. And maybe I can get it to the point where perhaps I cannot do work on it, I actually already formatted a USB drive, so let's install Fedora 42 with Cosmic. <laughs> okay, I put it into the drive and I already ran into the first issue. The live environment appeared, but I was AFK for like three minutes, so it went to sleep and now when I click on my mouse or keyboard, it doesn't wake it up anymore. So, okay, let's put into Fedora and start. Okay, my mouse didn't move for a moment. Oh, it's frozen again. Wait, could it be every time there's a pop-up, my, uh, yep, every time there's a pop-up, my mouse freezes. Oh, and it died. Okay, I guess it didn't go to sleep, but it just crashed. Okay, I unplugged two of my monitors, and I'm going to try again. So, hopefully it works this time. Okay, it just popped up for a moment, and it went black again. Well, I guess I can't use Fedora 42 Cosmic. Unfortunate. Man, but this completely throws a wrench into my plans. What am I gonna do now? I guess I could install a different distro, but which one? I have so many comments telling me to use Linux Mint, but what benefit would I gain from using Linux Mint? I might as well just use Fedora and install Cinnamon. <laughs> Man, I guess I'm just going to use... Oh, KDE Plasma is also an official edition now, but... <sighs> I'd rather just use GNOME, I guess. Maybe I can just install Cosmic without having to use the spin. Okay, I finished installing Fedora 42 as well as NVIDIA drivers. I had some issues during the installation, but just rebooting multiple times fixed it. Video files also didn't play in the GNOME video player, so I had to install VLC for that. MPV was really laggy for some reason, and so was the GNOME video player even after doing that fix. So that is a bit concerning. However, I am really happy to report that thus far, I am not experiencing any performance issues nor stuttering like I used to on Wayland. So I can already feel the improvement compared to last time. And now I'm thinking of what I'm going to do next. I'm not going to try video editing just yet because I doubt that DaVinci Resolve works well with Wayland. So instead, how about I use Linux for doing other daily tasks? So the first thing I want to do is to read a book whilst making Anki cards in Japanese. Okay, I ran into an issue, which is that the Anki add-on that I'm using, aka Migaku, doesn't work on Wayland. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if this is fixable, but the funny thing is that even if it fails, if I create a card, it still successfully makes a card, but it just has the syntax that otherwise I wouldn't have. Okay, great. My computer went to sleep and all the other monitors woke up, except for my main monitor. Even if I try to turn it on and off, it doesn't want to wake up. Okay, I turned it on and off from here and then it started working, but now I... Okay, I guess I'll just put it here and it's working again. I got it working. I installed Anki directly from the website and now when I launch it, it works. Okay, I just ran into another issue, which is that for some reason, Linux doesn't accept F13 as a valid key. So for example, this program monitors the keys that I'm pressing, but if I hit F13, nothing happens. And for some reason, BIA doesn't work. I just get a bunch of errors. 
I installed the desktop app of VI instead and that works. I have F13, 14, 15, 16 here, but they don't work. But actually, if I use show key, it does register, but I guess I have to like remap them or something. And I'm gonna do... Oh, I keep forgetting. Okay, it re registers it as F86 tools. So F13 is overwritten, essentially. I don't know, I put F13 to F18 because then it works. So, it's Okay, it's the next day, and yesterday I was able to read the book really nicely, except for the fact that the shortcut that I was talking about was still really buggy for some reason. And today, the extension that I was talking about suddenly doesn't work again. And it seems to be because I'm running Wayland, which is really weird because it was working before, and I didn't really do anything that should cause this. So that's pretty unfortunate, but it's actually a short-term problem because in the near future I won't be needing to use those tools anymore, so after that, no problem. And yeah, overall everything is running really nicely. And the next thing I want to try is whether or not the issues with gaming are still there. Okay, let's see if Tomb Raider 2 works. Oh god, it's so small. Okay, it seems to be working. Like last time, there were some frame rate issues, I think. For some reason, my OBS window is really laggy. I'm not really sure if that's reflected in the video as well, or if that's just a preview. I wonder if this place suddenly looks familiar to a few of you. Okay, yep, yeah, I can confirm that this game is completely playable. However, I'm pretty sure that when I alt-tabbed, the game is going to stop working. Let's see. Okay, I'm alt-tabbed. And... Oh, wait, what? It actually works. Okay, next, let's try 1.6 and let's see if it works. Okay, the game started, but let's see if it's actually playable, so... Oh, okay, my cursor is running off the screen like every time so if i move my mouse to the right wait what okay sometimes the cursor seems to run off the screen and i also feel like there is slight input delay okay i decided to launch cs source instead and the game definitely feels playable but sometimes the mouse goes off the screen which is kind of problematic but when it doesn't it's definitely a pretty enjoyable experience Okay, I'm trying out CS2 and it started in a window like this. It looks like your display has zero hertz mode, but it's currently running at zero hertz. Wait, was I dreaming this up the whole time? What if I make it full screen windowed? Well, that fixed it. But for some reason, I cannot click anything anymore. Okay, I launched the game with this command and now I'm able to click again. Okay, uh... The mouse just runs outside of the game. Okay, apparently there is this thing called game scope, and if you run it with this command, it should help. So let's see if that works. Oh, okay. Oh, never mind. Let's just move this window a bit. Okay, as long as the window isn't completely on the edge of the screen, then it seems to be fine when I use the game scope command. But I'm still having trouble with the resolutions, so... What if I make the game windowed? Okay, I can still click. Okay, now it goes to 5000. So if I now apply, it's too big because it's windowed and because of the bottom bar. But at least I can still click. And the reason it's 5000 is because of 150% scaling. So let's see if I put full screen again and hit apply. And now I cannot click anything. Okay, so essentially gaming is definitely doable on Linux, but it requires some fixes and maybe GNOME isn't the best desktop environment for this. And perhaps gaming on Wayland isn't the best idea, especially when it comes to competitive gaming. But I feel like if I optimize this setup for gaming, it will still be doable. So that's nice.
All right, once again, it's the next day, and I'm wondering what I should do now, because I've already tried reading, I've already tried gaming, both of which worked, although with some caveats, and the desktop is also really smooth, despite me using NVIDIA and Wayland, so I still don't want to do video editing, because I know it's not going to end well. So instead, I'm curious to know whether or not Hyperland has improved since the last time I used it. Okay, I used it around here, and there have been many updates ever since then. X Wayland drag and drop is back. You can now drag stuff from your Wayland clients to X11 clients. Okay, this was the biggest problem I had on Hyperland and it's now fixed. Sync fixes. Many, many XSplit sync and regular sync improvements. Tons of issues related to lag on Nvidia slash when high GPU utilization have been fixed and a lot of flicker issues as well. Well, those are actually perfect fixes because I'm pretty sure that Hyperland is going to be completely fine for me as well now. So perhaps I can try <laughs> installing Hyperland and see how it goes. Okay, we're in Hyperland now, and we have some anime character as the default wallpaper. I actually really like the colors and the cats. But the funny thing about this wallpaper is that people complained about having an anime wallpaper as the default wallpaper. So literally in the default configuration, there is a parameter that lets you disable the anime mascot wallpapers and the anime girl background. Sad face. But anyway, I actually already did some customization, like setting up my monitors and some keyboard shortcuts as well as the workspace rules and stuff like that, as well as scaling for which these options were really important. Like for example, this is VS Code. And if I comment these out, it looks really ugly if you don't enable this. And I did super minimal customization, but man, it is so nice. And I got the smart borders as well. So if I close this window, the gaps disappear. But if I open, let's say a terminal, it has gaps. And if I close them, the gaps disappear. Like now that Nvidia gets along with Wayland pretty well, as well as the drag and drop fixes. Okay, let's see if that works actually. I'm going to drag and drop a file to VS Code. Well, that didn't work. Uh... But it's so nice. And on top of all that, I discovered that when I try CS2 on Hyperland, uh, okay, ignore it spawning like this. I, I cannot click. Wait, it was fine a moment ago. Okay, let's just try with this command. Yes. I discovered that CS2 actually works. Well, oh the irony, but as I was recording the clip of how well CS2 works on Hyperland, the game crashed and the rest of the recording got corrupt beyond repair. So I decided to instead play a few real games to see what the actual experience was going to be like. And while it was definitely playable, the frame rate constantly dipped to around 100 FPS, which I know doesn't happen on Windows, so the game definitely wasn't running as smoothly as I would have liked it to run. And yeah, there is a little bit of input delay, but as you can see, I was still able to play the despite that. But in terms of the experience, the game definitely wasn't feeling as smooth as I would have liked it to feel, which makes it a bit less enjoyable. Now, a part of this could be the fact that I was recording with OBS the whole time. You can probably tell, but the recordings are quite jittery for some reason. And actually, this recording also got corrupt, so I had to fix it with FFmpeg. Well, anyway, I think I now have a pretty good idea about the current state of Linux, and I gotta say, it's actually pretty good. I mean, of course, I had issues, but compared to every other time that I've tried Linux in the past, this time I had by far the least amount of issues. However, for whatever reason, the recordings are a bit jittery and sometimes end up becoming corrupt. So if you consider yourself an expert on why it might be happening on my setup, do let me know in the comments. But anyway, just to recap, at the beginning of this video, I was pretty excited to try out Cosmic, but I kind of lost the interest because even the installer didn't work and it's most likely going to take multiple years before a proper stable version is going to be released anyway. And after finding out how well Nvidia works with Wayland now, I feel like Hyperland might actually become my go-to Linux environment because all the cosmetic fluff aside, it is still a really powerful dynamic tiling window manager. And the fact that it's running Wayland is also really important to me because I'll be very honest, if I'm forced to use X11, then I don't really want to use Linux because I'm going to have so many graphical issues, for example, with scaling, screen tearing, performance when I have different refresh rate monitors and so on. But considering the state of Wayland with Nvidia now, Wayland is already ready in a sense 
sense. Maybe not for multimedia work, and gaming does seem to have some caveats. For example, the very slight input delay. I haven't really looked into whether or not you can actually do something about that, or if it's a inherent limitation that doesn't have workarounds. And of course, aside from that, it's still not going to be a perfect experience like I had issues with, for example, if I open a terminal, go. That's kind of slow. If I open Firefox, whoa, that is slow. And if I open, like opening everything is so slow for whatever reason. I haven't looked into it, but I feel like this is not normal. Like Chrome is really laggy for whatever reason for me. Like, geez, I have hardware acceleration turned on and I am running Valent. The eyes aren't moving because Chrome is running Valent. And on X11, it is just as bad. Like, I'm not really sure what's causing that. So there are many random issues like that, but I'm definitely going to give this install around. Wait, it says, thanks, Brody. Hey, I know, Brody, you should check out the Tech Over T podcast that I was on. But anyway, I'm still not going to be able to switch over to Linux fully just yet, but I am going to keep this install around, most likely for development work and so on, and just to play around with it from time to time. And if I have any updates on how this journey is going, I'm most likely going to make some update videos, so I'll see you there. <laughs>